Hope you guys are doing well. Good morning. If you're listening on the podcast afterwards, uh, thank you so much for listening. Please leave a, a rate, rate and review and subscribe. And I don't, I don't know how that works. If you're watching this on the YouTube live stream channel afterwards, hello, we missed you. Thank you for watching. Um, I think I've decided to go live on the main channel so more people know about the live and then repost the um, recording to the live stream channel. That might change the more live stream subs we get, uh, but for now, this is what we're doing. So it's good to have you. Thank you for listening and watching. And if you're live, what's up? All right, uh, another thing I changed in YouTube is I think the delay between when I say something and when you guys hear it is, is less so that I can really have more back and forth between us and it's not so delayed, so that's good. So if you're watching, say hey, say where you're watching from, say who you are. All I see is a little counter of how many people are watching, so it's good for people like my dude David to um, just give a little shout out, say hey. Um, and I'll try to include you all in the discussion as we're going through. So, all right, let's get it. To start with the obvious, I rearranged the office here. Um, still figuring it out a little bit. I like things really symmetrical and I can see on this video that this is not in the middle of the shot and that's gonna bug me forever, but it's okay. Um, we're good, we're getting through it. I, I like this setup better as far as my office goes. Uh, as far as the live stream goes, you guys will have to tell me if you like this. Um, I think for the videos that I'm gonna be recording for Finisher Secrets and um, my main channel and stuff, I like this setup as well. So yeah, that's that's the obvious there. All right, next thing. Um, I kind of mentioned this last uh, live stream um, and a couple of you have told me you've, you've uh, purchased the book, uh, Do More Better by Tim Challies. Uh, I've started listening to the audiobook again. Um, it's weird. I can't say enough about this book. It's so, the ideas are very simple and I'll, I'll, I'll sort of just give you a quick summary. Tim Challies, he's like, hey, if you want to be productive and do more better, you've got to set your priorities first and then you can focus on the tools you use to uh, put things in the right place where they belong. Um, and once you do that, you know, you're focused on the right things and then you also have a home for every thing that you do, whether that is calendar or events, tasks or like to-do lists, and then uh, information. So those are like the three forms of uh, input that we get. And as long as we're putting them in the right place, you know, we're structured, we're able to focus on our priorities. And um, that's the whole book. I mean, it's like 100 pages, 100 to, I don't know, a little over 100. But what I've found is it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the Bible of productivity. I want to keep coming back to it because I just need to be reminded, you know, you can get caught up so much in how to take better notes or how to be more productive with your day or you know, whatever it might be. And these are all great tools, but if you don't have that sort of foundation on why you're doing it um, and what your priorities are, um, it doesn't really do anything for anyone. So um, yeah, you're just kind of turning the wheels. So that's what I'm trying to do, go back to it. And it's something that I have been, and honestly, I hope not, but probably always will be um, fighting, you know, trying to stick to priorities and things like that. So great book. Um, <clears throat> I actually talked with Maria last night. Maria, if you're watching, hi, I love you. Um, you said you would watch and you said I should tell everyone how great of a wife you are and it's true and I love you and you're great. Um, we were talking last night, uh, I'm feeling a little anxious and overwhelmed with some things right now. And one of the things that came up in our discussion was the idea of uh, I've really been enjoying taking walks through the woods um, with my dog and listening to podcasts, listening to the nature, um, music, audiobooks, and just taking that time to exercise a little, but also just think. And uh, Henry David Thoreau was a huge, you know, believer in um, taking walks through woods for hours on end. Uh, apparently, he would walk for like six, eight hours through the woods, which is really weird. 
Um, so that's super cool. Uh, got a comment from David watching from Orange Beach, Alabama. Cool. Also, I would definitely like to learn more about Notion. I'm constantly looking for a better note taking system. Yeah, David. So, uh, Notion, just, I think it's notion.io. It's free. Um, there are paid versions, but if you have a, um, like a school email, like I use vt.edu, my school email, uh, you get like the, I think like the lowest priced tier for free, but there's also just a free tier in general. Um, some people I would recommend watching on YouTube, Ali Abdal, uh, he does some really cool stuff with Notion. Uh, Thomas Frank, I think is his name, does some cool stuff with Notion. So basically it's just like, it's an interweb for everything that you have. So there's calendars, there's notes. Um, it, it's, it's, it's like a website for all your information. It's, it's really cool. And I think it could maybe be overwhelming. And I think the, the best thing to do is just dive in and play around with it watch some other YouTubers and see some of the setups they have in Notion, but Evernote, um, Bear, Apple Notes, um, there's a ton of different, Yaswo, what up? Hope I'm saying your name right. There's a ton of different um, note-taking apps, and again, like going back to Do More Better by Tim Challies, like this is the, the information section where you store information. Um, Notion bar none the best I've ever used um, it's perfect well I wouldn't say it's perfect but it's it's awesome so um, yeah I love it so for those of you watching notion.io check it out trust me I'd love to also if you just want to send over some of your setups and stuff if you do get in there you know I'm, I'm constantly looking for different ways of being productive or whatever um, with what I'm doing and in fact um, something I could do, maybe I'll make a note to do this next time. Um, I'll show my Notion setup. I think that'd be pretty cool. I could just share my screen with you guys and kind of walk you through uh, how I use Notion. Um, it's basically where I store everything. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so the, the ideas of, you know, walking through the wood. Thank you for that, David. Um, check it out. Uh, walking through the woods for hours on end, you know, obviously he didn't have other priorities. <laughs> so, um, there's that. Uh, I don't know. I just, for, you know, for me, I'd love to take eight hours out of my day and walk through the woods, but hello, you know, other things to do. Um, <clears throat> but they're really cool. They're valuable. I've really been enjoying it. It, it it's become something that I feel I need in a way. So, yes, Web says, I got to your channel because of bullet journaling. I was into it earlier this year. <clears throat> yeah, I appreciate you for sticking around beyond the bullet journaling. Um, I was talking to uh, my new friend, um, Foisel, and he said, like, it's weird. Like, you have over 8,000 subscribers, but your view count's not that impressive. And I'm like, yeah because I made a couple bullet journaling videos, a ton of people subscribed to me, and then I haven't made any other bullet journaling videos, so they don't watch or unsubscribe whenever I post something. So, um, yeah, I appreciate you for sticking around, <clears throat> and I hope you do. Um, yeah, it's been funny. It's been funny. I always, I always tell people, like, the bullet journal, I think I made two, and the first one was called, like, a productivity bullet journal. So the idea was it's not creative. It's not crazy. It's never going to change. It is what it is, period. This is the only one I'll ever use. I hope you can take some value from it. And then people kept asking me to make more bullet journal videos. And I'm like, the whole, the whole point of the first video was to never have to make one again. So it's a me problem. I know. Uh, and I'm not complaining about people leaving, you know, that's the thing with YouTube. You subscribe to a certain type of content. If you don't get that content, you leave or whatever. So not a big deal, but, um, yeah. Anyway. So next, if you want to be productive in anything in your life, you first have to start with priorities, video ideas. If you want to be productive, watch this first. Yeah. So that, that goes 
back to what I was saying with the Do More Better um, book, the idea of if you want to be productive, you have to decide what you want to be productive in first and then set that hard priority. Um, Because if you're just saying, I want to be productive, it's like, okay, well, you can be productive in being unproductive, (laughs) you know? So just being productive for productive sake doesn't really help anyone. So, um, yeah, moving on. Currently, I'm happy with personal brand content. Yeah, um, this. I really enjoy the live streams. You know, there's only a couple of you commenting right now, and I, I just, I hope more people will join in because I like the back and forth. Um, I love this part. I've been doing vlogs every now and then, which I send off to an editor, uh, Stephanie. She's awesome, um, which makes it easy on me. You know, I just film the moment and uh, send it to her. She edits, great edits, um, and then post that on the, the vlog channel, um, which is easy. Finish your secrets. I, you know, we posted our first video for that um, two weeks ago, I think, uh, which did really well. It was cool working with a a team on a video, on a YouTube video. So that was cool. I'm excited for that. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm happy with the personal brand side of, excuse me, uh, the content I'm creating, and that was just something I wanted to point out. I haven't been taking as many thoughts and notes and ideas, um, so I'm trying to make it more of a habit to every day be writing down thoughts and ideas for these live streams. Um, because if I come to this live stream and I don't have anything to share, then it's going to be real boring. So um, I checked out Naval. I was intrigued, but grounded. Yeah, so Naval is a podcasting guy, I think. Learned about him from Craig Adams. Um, Craig Adams loves him. Uh, he's a really smart individual, Naval, uh, in a V A L. I don't think he really went. The episode I listened to on his podcast, he was he was sort of talking with another person. And they were talking, you know, big picture like physics and math and um, the world and gravity and all uh, all this big, huge, sciencey math physics, chemistry, whatever. Um, And it was really cool getting to hear them talk on this super high level. But it's just, I say I was grounded in listening because, you know, as a, as a Christian, every point of my thinking, every, the basis of all my thinking is in God and Jesus and um, how those sciences and those efforts of humanity fit into that. Um, so, you know, listening, it's funny, man. Like, I'm, I don't try to put down science, but it's funny when people work so hard to figure out life. Um, and then for me, in my belief, um, it's already figured out. <laughs> what matters is figured out. So, there's a part of me that does enjoy that stuff because you know it's learning it's it's learning more about something i don't know uh that i find interest in but at the same time i'm grounded knowing that if i don't know the answer it's okay you know i don't think we're supposed to know everything so those are the thoughts i had on the vault i don't know how much more i'm going to listen to him probably a little bit uh he doesn't really release content all that often as far as i can tell so all right so something i think david asked about last week was for me to share my morning routine uh which yeah we'll go ahead and do that um it's changed recently because of all this like the live streams the content i'm doing for finisher secrets um obviously having a a baby um trying to exercise trying to be here early at agenicare so i can leave a little bit early because Lena goes to sleep earlier and if I left at five I would basically get maybe 30 minutes with her before she goes to sleep so 30 minutes a day um, which I know there are people out there who probably don't even see their kid throughout the week um, because of their working and they're working hard and I'm, I'm not complaining I'm just saying you know in my situation I try to get here a little earlier so I can leave a little earlier I'm so parched um yeah so the morning routine has changed um basically 
it's kind of simple. So on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I try to get up at six and work out um, for about 30 minutes. Now, whether that's running, running takes a little less time because I'm going faster and I get worn out faster. Walking takes, a little, walking takes a little more time. Basically, I try to do about 30 minutes of exercise. You know, thanks Apple for the 30 minute exercise ring. Um, so that's what I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. When I get back, I get ready, shower, and it's, it's still pretty early, 6.30, 6.45. Um, so I'll, you know, read my Bible or a book. I'll drink my coffee um, and spend a little time with the family and then try to leave for work about 7.45 to get here at 8. So I'm still here uh, about an hour before other people get here um, to get that early work done so I can leave early. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm early to work. So today, uh, the goal is to get here by 7.15 so that I can go live at 7.30. And then on Thursdays, those are the days that I've set aside to do finisher secret um, videos. So currently, we're just doing one every two weeks. So every other Thursday, I'm filming. Um, if we're not shooting a finisher secret video on Thursday morning, then I still come in early and try to do sort of like admin stuff for the brand, um, whether it's checking on stats, analytics, uh, maybe planning more content, writing a script, something like that. Just something that is dedicated to this personal brand stuff instead of Agenicare. And then again, around eight, I get into Agenicare work. So today though, um, on live stream days, I usually go till 8.30 live streaming and then get into Agenicare work. So um, when I start doing uh, Agenicare work, which by the way, Agenicare work, meaning my full-time job, Agenicare, that's who I work for. Uh, I start by prepping for the day in my finisher's journal. Um, I look at my digital calendar, see where everyone else in the office is going to be throughout the day. If I have any meetings, I put the meetings down in the calendar section for the day. Uh, and then I write down my most important task and then tasks cascading um, based on their priority. Uh, ultimate goal is just to get that one task done. Um, that's, if, if I can get that done, then it's a successful day, which feels good. So uh, usually that's a bit bigger task and one that's more time sensitive and important. So there's JC coming in. Um, yeah, so that's what I do and take any notes and sort of just kind of dive into either that to do list or any sort of housekeeping things I need to do for the company for myself and the marketing work that we're doing here. So. Yep, and then around nine is when people sort of like roll in. They've been rolling in a little bit earlier since we came to the new office, which is nice. Uh, but that's sort of when I open my door. Meetings are usually starting around 9.30 um, per day. That's sort of our earliest meeting. Today though, I do have a meeting at nine. Uh, with Amanda, for watching. Um, don't forget, you gotta be on that meeting too. All right, so that's my morning routine basically. Uh, weekends are just kind of wake up when the family wakes up, make coffee, stuff like that. Um, is our stream not doing too hot? Hmm. It says my network connection is not good. I don't know. I'm just going to keep rolling. If you guys, you know, if the network connection is not good, things are lagging. Uh, I apologize. Kind of working with what I got here. So we will, um, you know, it's going to be reposted on the live stream channel. So, all right. Next thought. I know what it takes to be less distracted socially. Just read or listen to Cal Newport. Um, some digital minimalism to figure that out. I just don't know if I'm fully ready to commit pushing every conversation to an office hour. Yeah, so I've been listening to Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. It's a good book and I, I will recommend it. I will put it on my website as a recommended read um, because I think there's a lot of value in getting away from this. Um, it's a scale, you know, you can throw your phone out the window um, or you can just turn off notifications for Instagram, right? Like there are things you can do to spend less time on your phone and more time in the world with people. Um, I think in digital minimalism, Cal Newport takes it to an extreme where um, 
I don't know, he even talks about having office hours for people. And I think like, you know, I get it, right? Like if, if, if you're always letting people text you, call you, email you, message you on Instagram, Facebook, wherever, like it's a lot and it's distracting you from productive work and maybe even productive leisure time. Um, but I mean, he even talks about like holding office hours for social conversations. And I just think it's weird to be like, hey mom, you can call me, uh, sure, and I'll, I'd be glad to talk, but please only call me between the hours of 3 and 4 p.m. every day, you know? And, and that's kind of what it teeters on in that book. Um, obviously, you can do that to be more productive. And maybe his point is like, this is the idea, right? Um, but it's a little much. <laughs> and maybe I'm kind of missing the point. So weird all right david gulich says my wife and i have a two-month-old congrats oh that's so fun we were just looking at videos of lena last night i think when she was really little and then we like quickly went to like yesterday when we took a picture of her and like compared and it's just like insane dude two to ten months like so much different but congrats on the two-month-old hope you're getting sleep that's always the joke we didn't get much sleep, but it didn't really bother us. You know, it was, it was a joy to get up at 11, 2, 4, you know, at night to, to see her and feed her. And man, fun times. My wife and I have a two month old and I have been really struggling with developing a good morning routine, which makes me feel very unproductive. Yeah, David, um, I, I think. You know, something too, I think Maria and I talked about yesterday in our discussion that we had is you got to give yourself a little bit of grace. You know, I think um, keep trying and doing the best you can to have a morning routine. But um, like it's hard. You have a two month old, right? Like, you know, and that's something Maria and I were talking about with exercise. Like, yeah, we would love to work out every day and we should. But trying really hard to make that work and taking away from, you know, other stuff. Um, just give yourself some grace and I know you probably feel unproductive, but you know, that, that kind of comes with having a kid, you know, um, things get hectic as much as you would like to plan. Things don't go to plan. Um, I would say, you know, for me being an introvert, uh, I do get a lot of like energy from being alone and working on projects and having productive leisure as Cal Newport calls it in digital minimalism. Um, you know. I don't know, setting that time aside as much as you can, but also being aware that you might not get it. <laughs> I try, that's probably a, oh, a big sin of mine is I try really hard to get it. Um, and it's very important to me and it's something I'm working through, struggling with, and it's causing me some anxiety. So good luck, um, you, you'll figure it out. And you know, the older your kid gets, you know, you'll know, you continue to have problems in various ways and sorts. I'm assuming I'm talking right now like I'm an expert and I only have a 10 month old. So um, I'm only a little bit ahead of you, but just give yourself grace. Um, that's something Maria brought up last night. It's such a good point and something I'm going to be thinking about more as I'm planning my days and things like that. Yes. Whoa says, how'd you start your YouTube channel? What was your inspiration? Uh, yeah. So, um, I started my first YouTube channel in 2009. It was my music channel. And that was just like, I remember at first I was posting videos of myself covering songs on Facebook and my parents were like, don't show your face. <laughs> that was like a big thing. So I have these videos of like, just like my chest playing guitar uh, and singing. And then I started YouTube just cause like I saw other, I saw, that's how I learned to play guitar. And I saw people like getting views and doing well. This is before monetization was even a thing, I think. And so I started that channel in 2009 and that was the only channel I really had until I got about mid college, um, to 2014 maybe. And then I started, uh, I fell in love with vloggers, Ben Brown, fun for Louie, Casey Neistat, obviously. Um, so I started various vlogging channels, which I've talked about this before. Um, it was a mistake how I did YouTube in the past. And I think I have a good system now, which is good. Um, the current channel that I'm streaming to now, 
Uh, I found about out about minimalism. It's funny. I think I watched the minimalist documentary and I was kind of like, that's crazy. But then I found the director, Matt Diavella, who created the film, his YouTube channel. And I was like, Hey, this guy's cool. And so I, I really took a hard look at minimalism and started wondering if it's a lifestyle that I could uh, follow. And if you watch the first few videos on this channel, you'll see they were minimalism videos. Uh, that's what I tr started this new channel based on is like, hey, I'm going to start getting rid of a bunch of stuff. Feel free to follow along and you can too or just live vicariously through me getting rid of stuff. Um, so it turned into, you know, minimalism, productivity. I was in, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I had a couple businesses. So I uh, started talking about that a little bit as well. And then, um, you know, found out about bullet journaling, made a couple of videos, those blew up. And that's kind of where we are today. So uh, inspiration was a few different things and I've been on YouTube for a while. Uh, I also watched the minimalism documentary and I'm also following Matt. Yeah, Matt, that's great. Everyone follows Matt. If you don't, what are you doing? Matt Diavella. Interesting guy. Pretty cool. I think he does minimalism well. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. That's how I did that. So, all right, next. Every time I go on a walk or a run, I think, to my, yeah. So here's the funny thing. Uh, being healthy is just, it's weird. It's hard. I think everyone knows that, but it's funny. I just wrote this down because I was on a walk and this happened. Every time I go on a walk or a run, I think to myself, man, this is great. It's helping me, but I need to eat better. You know, that would only help more. Um, but whenever I'm about to eat a donut, right? I think to myself like, ah, it's okay. I'll have another one. Cause I'm gonna go on a run tomorrow. <laughs> so it's like this stupid back and forth. Like in the moment, I'm eating unhealthy because I'll work out. And then when I'm working out, I'm like, I need to eat healthier. Um, yes, whoa, yeah, man. Uh, he said, thanks for answering. Of course. For sure. Um, interested if you have a channel. I mean, you do, obviously. Um, do you post to your YouTube channel? What What is it about? So I thought that was funny. Um, Running out of notes here. You know, I said earlier, I haven't been um, writing as many notes down, so I need to get on that for next week. All right, and this is something I learned. Um, oh, yes, well, uh, has to go to sleep now. Um, yeah, yes, well, I'll do live streams every Tuesday at this time. So I'd love to have you join back up. I hope you have a great night sleep. Uh, I'm guessing you're quite a bit ahead of us. Uh, I mean, it's 7.30 a.m. here, so. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for stopping by, and hope to see you next time, bud. Um, so in Cal Newport's Digital Minimalism, it talks about, you know, if you're getting rid of things that take up your time and, you know, give you that little dopamine hit um, and are addicting, it's, I guess it's kind of like with everything um, addiction-wise. Like if you're gonna quit something, it leaves a void in your life so you feel you're very much missing out on something so i wrote it's important to not just quit something cold turkey because then the time spent doing that task is filled with nothingness and it feels you're lacking something it's better to begin so first step with finding an activity to fill the void before quitting that unwanted habit or task trn hey uh good to have you back hope you're doing well she says, hey, everyone, in the chat. Um, yeah, so this is something, you know, I'm trying to, it, I think it's something a lot of people don't think of um, when they're trying to quit a bad habit or maybe they're trying to create a habit or something. Maybe it's just more about quitting. So like quitting social media, if you spend, I mean, your phone will tell you, if you spend three hours a day on social media and then you just stop using social media, that's three hours of your day where you're like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, and it feels weird. It feels bad. It doesn't feel good. Probably it might feel a little good, but I get so parched on these so much talking. Yeah. Um, so that's something to think about. I don't know. Wanted to share with you all. 
So for instance, if you are trying to be on social media less, you need to say like, first, let me find something that's going to replace that time before you quit it so that it's not a void in your life. It's filled immediately with something. So I don't know. I'm sure I'll develop more thoughts about that. I don't really have any specific thoughts right now, but I thought that was a good talking point. Look up the book, The Revenge of the Analog. Yeah, in um, in Digital Minimalism, he talks about a book called The Revenge of the Analog. Um, and I guess, you know, from what I understand, really quick before I hop into this, David says, I got into minimalism almost 10 years ago, but I've never seen, heard about a documentary. I started my journey with a podcast called The Minimalists. Yeah, David, so that's really funny you haven't heard of the documentary because it's about the minimalists um it's on netflix directed by matt diavella it follows the minimalists around um on like a book tour or something and they sort of just talk through the ideas they interview a lot all these other minimalists and how they're living their lives and the freedoms they found and stuff um documentary is okay um so yeah the minimalists are they have a pretty interesting story. I listened to the book, I think their first book that they wrote, audiobook, on my walks. Um, and just hearing, like, you know, they, they both had big time jobs, making tons of money, and they just hated their lives and how they sort of broke everything down and <clears throat> only have what, you know, brings them joy or whatever the cliches are with minimalism. Um, but yeah, watch the, the documentary is called Minimalism, I think, and it's on Netflix. I'm sure you would enjoy it if you listen to The Minimalists. Tiaran says, I'm trying to read more instead of scrolling Twitter. And then she says, I like Matt's YouTube channel, but didn't know they had a documentary. Yeah. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> it's on there. He actually, I think he just made another one. I don't remember what it's called. Um, but yeah, he's got two documentaries under his belt now, which is pretty cool. On Netflix, of all places, which is neat. Yeah, good luck with uh, Twitter. Uh, I've never really, I've tried Twitter so many times. It doesn't do it for me. Normal social media doesn't do it for me. I think I can get sucked into Facebook or LinkedIn or TikTok or whatever, but I'm just not that addicted to it, I don't think. YouTube is the one for me, man. Maria got mad at me the other night. I'm just sitting there scrolling through YouTube. Not even watch, like you know how YouTube will autoplay? I'll just like watch the auto plays in silence. Excuse me, I'm sorry. So weird. <laughs> I mean, they got me. They got me on the algorithm. They know what I like to see. So, yeah, reading more. It's awesome. I have a hard time reading. Audiobooks are my jam, but I also realize I'm missing a ton with audiobooks because I'm usually doing something else. Even just walking, I'm like, especially with the dog, I'm like, don't eat that. No, 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 don't poop there. You know, and I'm not fully engaged. So, um, a little bit more time here. Yeah, so the book Revenge of the Analog, Cal Newport talks about it uh, in Digital Minimalism. Uh, I think it just talks about how people realized how much time, you know, the internet was taking from people. And so the example he gives is there's a coffee shop called um, snakes and lattes and the idea is you go in uh, I think it's like five dollars to even enter the lines usually wrapped around the building you go in you drink coffee and then they've got board games like galore and they even have people who will like they're like um, sommeliers of board games like they'll They'll come up and you'll be like, hmm, I'd like something a little challenging. And they'll be like, let's look at our collection. <laughs> like, they'll help you find a good board game for you and your friends. And uh, I don't think you're allowed to use your phone or something like that. But the idea of, like, this sort of reaction to the digital world being, you know, all analog. And I think the revenge of the analog. Um, so, yeah, I kind of want to look into it just because I think it'd be interesting to hear about stories like that. Like a coffee shop or other businesses that have risen up in the shadow of the digital age. Um, I think it'd be an interesting listen. 
plan my focus modes on iOS 15. Yeah, so many of you may know, but I am a huge tech nerd, uh, most specifically Apple products. I, iMac, MacBook, iPhone, Apple Watch. You know, like I, I love it. They got me in the ecosystem. It literally makes my life so much more productive and convenient. And I know that I'm trapped, but I don't mind. <laughs> I love it. Um, iOS 15 will be coming out this fall. They released the public beta. So if you have an iPhone uh, or any other Apple products, you can get it right now. It'll be a little buggy, but it's been pretty great on my iPhone 12 mini in my max focus mode so you have do not disturb mode trn says ios for the win yes uh you have do not disturb mode which is a thing you can put on your phone and it won't like notify you of things and they sort of like quadrupled down on the idea of do not disturb mode which is something i've been wanting forever i i can never figure out why there's never been an away message for imessage like i want to put my phone down when i get home from work but there's always like, but what if someone texts me? They're just gonna be like, man, he's not answering me or maybe something's wrong, you know? Um, so I'm like, why can't you just set an away message? <laughs> so when someone texts you, it's like, hey, I'm spending time with my family. If you really need me, call me and my phone will ring or something like that, I don't know. But anyway, they did something kind of like that, but even better with focus mode. So you can set different modes that your phone is in so for instance it takes a little bit of setting up but i did a work mode so when i enter in the vicinity of my office work mode turns on the apps displayed on my home screen change to only apps that i use for work so no youtube um no games literally nothing that could distract me from doing my work um and that's all I see. Notifications from any app that's not work related get silenced. So they do, they'll show your home screen like all as one notification that you can click and expand, but it won't notify you. Your phone won't light up. You won't get a ding. My Apple Watch won't buzz. Um, unless it's a contact that I've said can contact me while I'm at work. So people um, here at the office, if they text me, I get those. If they call me, I get those if Maria texts or calls I get those my family so you can say who you want to distract you or contact you um, and it, it's it's all customizable like it's amazing so when I leave like literally if I go home for lunch work mode turns off and my regular mode turns on now I want to set up other modes so like leisure mode which is like all the games show up YouTube shows up Instagram I usually just do for fun on my phone and then I want to have family mode or home mode where, you know, when I turn it on or at a certain time of day, it turns on and I get no work notifications, no, not even leisure notifications. It's like, hey, if my family needs to call me, they can get to me, everything else, you know, and that way I can keep my phone in my pocket or over on a table and really not have to worry about missing anything. And as I stated when I started this, it will say like, hey, Spencer is in home mode, you know, if you really need to get through to him, click here, you know, and that just, that deters people from being like, hey, could you work on this document right now at 8 p.m.? And it's like, ah, you know what? I can just tell him to do that tomorrow when I get to work kind of thing. So it is a game changer, TRN, um, which is what you just said. And I'm really excited about it. It does take a little bit of setting up and I need to carve out some time, um, but that's, it's awesome. I'm excited to explore that and have that at my disposal. I've had, I had it on yesterday, which is the first day here at work and it was awesome. Like I only got the stuff I need for work, um, which was neat. And then when I got home from work, I had all these notifications from stuff that doesn't really matter, but I could catch up on it. So super, super cool. All right, we got about nine minutes left here. Um, let's see. You know, since we have, you know, just a short amount of time more, um, anyone watching, commenting, if you want to ask any questions or maybe give something you've been thinking about recently, um, yeah, we could just have a little discussion. 
Um, while you're catching up to the video, I'll go through one more of these and then we'll just kind of chat. We'll just talk. Um, yeah, so, you know, David, TRN, whoever else might be watching, uh, feel free to chime in. Let's chat. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll end on this point. So a daily content newsletter. So some of you might know, um, I like left Instagram. I, don't, I love making content, but I don't really like the platforms. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but basically here's the gist. I have a website and I post all of the content that I think is great on that website. And I want someone who's interested in my content to be able to subscribe to that content. I think it's asking a lot from people to be like, subscribe to the Spencer Pugh social media um, company. But I don't know, I, I, in the same way, like people would subscribe to a blog or a newsletter, it's the same. Like I wanna just, I want people who are interested in what I'm making to be notified when I make something. And I think it'd be cool if they don't have to chase me around the internet and all my various YouTube channels, social media channels. So like, I'd love to do a daily content newsletter where if I create something yesterday, it automatically at seven the next morning lands in your mailbox. And I want it to just be like, like say I do a couple videos yesterday and maybe I wrote a blog post. I'd want all that to be in a newsletter tomorrow morning. So, oh look, he made a video on productivity. I'm interested in that. And he wrote a little bit about something, a habit he's trying to, to work on. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think that'd be cool. I just need to figure out, like I know MailChimp will do kind of automatic um, sending of a blog post and I was playing around with it, but it wasn't doing videos very well. Like it wasn't showing the thumbnail of videos. It was like, you couldn't even click on it. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm trying to think too hard. Maybe it just needs to be like links, a bunch of links with a little blurb or something. I don't know, but I would love it to be automated. I don't want to have to like put in more time every every morning sending this out. Like I'd want it to just go out. If I made something yesterday, it goes out. If I didn't make anything yesterday, nothing goes out, right? I was kind of doing like a weekly newsletter that way, but I was having to do it myself, which might be, that may be what we need to do just in general. But um, I don't know, give me your thoughts on that. Uh, if you're watching this, is that something you'd be interested in? Or would you rather just chase me around the internet um, if you're interested in my content to begin with? Um, yep. I still got a good amount of notes. R these are really good notes, actually. Um, but we'll save those for next week. And hopefully I can add more next week. Maybe next week I'll show my Notion setup as well so you guys can get an idea of how I do that. Remind me, I might forget, even though I took a note. Hopefully I won't forget, but uh, yeah, if that's, if that's all we got, um, I appreciate you guys. It's been awesome per usual. I love the discussions, the back and, back and forth. I want to give a quick shout out to Paul Detus. I think that's how you say your last name. That's how I've always said it. Um, he shared sort of his thoughts and opinions on these live streams and I guess my content kind of in general last night uh, we were chatting on Instagram. He made a lot of good points um, and I just, I appreciate that honest feedback and I've got to message him back because I didn't have time last night, but um, great points. Uh, I thought about a lot of them already. Um, I think a lot of it just has to do with where I am in life right now, which that doesn't mean anything to anyone watching right now. So anyway, just a shout out to Paul. Appreciate it. TRN, thanks for being here. David, thanks for being here. Um, yes, whoa, thanks for chiming in earlier. If you watch the rest of this later, um, I'd, I'd love to have you guys back next Tuesday, 7.30 a.m. And we'll get it. Um, really, really, really enjoying these. Really enjoying you guys. Um, again, if you're listening after the fact on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts, it's Spencer Scott Pugh. If you want to subscribe there, thank you for listening. Um, please rate, review, and subscribe. Um, getting like 30-ish listens per episode on podcasts. I'll share that with you, um, which is crazy. Let me know who you are. I'd love to know 
who's listening and if you have any opinions or thoughts. Uh, and if you're watching this on the live stream channel afterward, thank you. Subscribe here. It's possible that at some point in the future, we will be going live from the live stream channel. So you won't want to miss that if I make that switch. I'll obviously announce it, but um, love you guys. Thanks. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Um, there should be a little bit more content coming out from me this week, I think. Finish your secrets. Actually, that might go out next week. So, um, yeah, hope you guys have a great week. Stay productive. Focus on the things that matter. And um, see you next time.